Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Chicks Talking Picks. And if you've never joined us before, we're glad you found us. This channel is a bi-weekly image discussion with two nature photographers. Um, and we are here to review images that are sent in by viewers like you. And we discuss possibilities to improve those images uh, for either your home wall or for competition. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm Sandy Zalasko, uh, pro photographer, specializing in wildlife and conservation uh, uh, photographs and, and projects. I'm in the business nearly 30 years owner of Sandra Lee Photography. I'm signing on here from sunny San Diego. We've got a beautiful day again. And uh, I lead workshops across the country. You can find my um, website at investinnature.org. And Jenny, how about you? Uh, yeah, hi, good, good to see you, Sandy. Um, I'm Jenny Wolf. Um, my formal education is in biology. And I spent many years working in restoration ecology and nearshore fisheries here in San Diego. And photography has always been a part of that work. Um, in addition to biology, I'm also a commercially rated hot air balloon pilot, which is what my photographic focus has been lately. Um, you can see that work at wolfheartimages.com. And I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. All right. Up, up and away, Jenny, let's go. I know you're getting ready to head out uh, this summer for yep. your uh, balloon tours. So everybody stay tuned. Jenny might have some stories about that in our next episode. And why don't you explain to everybody what this channel's uh, purpose is, what we're all about. Yeah, so what we're trying to do is um, when you submit images to a competition, you don't always know why they do well or don't do well. And so we wanna give you a look at the discussions that Sandy and I have when we're judging photos together um, and what it takes to make photos move on to the next level or earn a ribbon. So whether yeah. you're entering competitions or not, we're hoping this will help you improve your photographs, um, improve the way you look at your photographs more critically, and to be more intentional while taking your photos and while processing them. Perfect, yeah, Jenny's just explained it great. Um, so Jenny and I have been judges at the San Diego County Fair for the last oh, half a dozen years. And that fair sees about 10,000 images. We're not the only judges, we're uh, part of a, a, a bigger group, but we do get about three categories every year to judge. So we see quite a few images and our first round of judging, we give it a pass or fail. Second round of judging is more critical. So we've had a lot of experience judging that, um, that competition and others for local camera clubs, uh, some international places, things like that. So we feel we're qualified um, to do, run a show like this to help you uh, see how your images might improve. And we just found that some of those images just missed the mark uh, of getting, you know, getting on walls or getting in, getting uh, um, passed into competitions. I don't want to say that passed in, but um, co you know, get, making competitions. And um, so we think that uh, we're pretty qualified for that at this point after doing it for so many years. So Jenny, let's get started with the first picture. Let's. Uh, we have uh, Kim Bryant, who has um, given us an image called uh, Little Tree. Yep. And uh, I can start here, I guess. All right, you take it. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a really cute image. I like the little tree. I like what you've seen, uh, Kim. I think you've um, done a great job capturing, making it, uh, capturing the most important part of the scene which is that small tree. But a few things I think you can improve on, and uh, that would be your uh, focus, first of all. I think there's a little bit of camera movement. This might've been taken early morning or late in the day when the light was going down, or even in open shade for whatever reason. Um, 
I think the camera movement is uh, evident. So I think we need to watch that. If you're not on a tripod, you might wanna be on a tripod for this image. Uh, I like the little bend in the, in the uh, tree trunk. It really kind of tells a story about a struggling tree coming out of these rocks. Uh, I like all that about it. It might be a little cluttered in the lower left-hand corner. And even if you can't get rid of most of that in the left-hand corner, or you can, yes, Jenny, that's great. You can darken that up a bit and have it not so, um, you know, prominent in the image, but for the, at the very least, that little tiny corner rock in the left corner is very distracting. It pulls my eye down to your, to that rock and you want to keep the viewer's eye right on that tree. Jenny, what can you add to that? Hey, well, you covered a lot of it. Um, the thing I liked was the concept, the story of the kind of age old struggle for life, this little Charlie Brown tree finding a, a place to live in the collected soil at the, the cleft in this rock. Um, but like Sandy said, a deal breaker as far as competition would be the focus. Uh, it just wouldn't move past the first level because of that. Um, and the debris, like she mentioned. Um, I also think in the processing, if you use some dodge and burn, you could highlight that tree a little bit better and maybe darken the background and give it some pop away from the background. But I do like the story of the, you know, little tree struggling to survive, but there's just too much other stuff um, going on. You might be able to change your position to get rid of the debris or even just go and pick up the dead sticks and move them. Um, you know, moving objects that, you know, moving living objects would be a problem, but if it's just dead debris, I don't think anyone would complain if you move that out of the way. Right, I agree. I, I would pick those um, those branches and twigs and move them out of the, the image. Um, yeah, the story is what I like, what draws me into this image. So very good eye, Kim, that was, that's great. Um, thanks for sending that one in. All right, let's move to our next image by Kim. Jenny, you wanna start? Okay, so we obviously have a, a brown pelican. Um, First off, again, uh, the focus is not tack sharp. And for competitions, that is, you know, the first thing the, the judges look for. Um, the texture on the feathers is really nice. I like that. Um, you don't really need the top part of the frame. Uh, I could say you could crop it there and probably even come in here and you would start to have a little more, <clears throat> a little better portrait of the pelican without all the uh, um, the extra space, especially this right here is very distracting. Yes, that is. Um, yeah, I think that was most of, I mean, the, the lighting's nice. There's not any harsh lighting, which is kind of nice. Um, could have been a cloudy day. But what do you have to add? Yeah, I think the focus is a little before the the pelican's head. Uh, so we get a lot of that detail in the feathers. Now, one of two things, you could change the focus to the eye. You put your focusing um, point on that eye or right by that head a little bit um, instead of in front, that would bring your focus to the eye. Or you could increase your depth of field. And if you were shooting this at um, and I did not look to see what you were shooting it at, but if you were shooting this at, at wide open at F8 or at F11, you would get dramatically different results from that. Uh, so go ahead, Jenny, you were gonna say? No, I'm just agreeing with what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so either, either or, you could either uh, change your focal point, focus point, or you can increase your depth of field a little bit to get all of the bird from the, tail feathers to the head in focus. Mm -hmm. So that might be a, a trick to solving the focus issue with this image. I agree with your cropping suggestions. That would be wonderful. 
the bird's looking to the right, so you want to leave a little more space in front, but I would crop off the left like you suggested, Jenny. Uh, and I can also see another bird's feather to the left. So that is, that again, bottom left is a little distracting there. Um, I, I like, I, I don't see as much a story in this one as I do with the little tree that's struggling, but um, you know what? I, it's a good portrait of a, of a um, brown pelican. So in breeding plumage, I, thank you for getting there and, and bringing some color into your image. Very good. So yeah, I think the crop would help it a little bit. And of course, definitely the focus. So, you know, you wanna be on the eye level with that bird when you're focusing too, if you can. If I don't, I know if you took this at La Jolla, that might be a hard one to do. Uh, Cause you know, the sidewalk or the ground is so far up higher than some of those pelicans where they land. But um, yeah, keep that in mind. So very I don't good. Know, um, what kind of camera you're shooting with? Not that the equipment tends to matter, but one of the features in my Sony is it has animal eye focus. So it actually recognizes an eye and focuses on it. And uh, that's been a real game changer for fast moving animals for me. Yeah, a lot of the new uh, cameras, Canon has the same thing. I'm sure Nikon the Z has the same thing, the eye focusing capabilities. So that may be a route if, you know, some people have, um, and I don't know Kim, personally to say, speak anything about uh, limited physical disabilities, but I'm gonna say that some of these new um, features in these mirrorless cameras are great for some of us older photographers that, you know, can't see much to, you know, focus in the viewfinder anymore, <laughs> or, you know, have that, it, it, just a great, great tool for people to have. So yeah. anyway. Okay, let's go to the next image. Thanks, Kim. This is Kim's third image. And um, I like this image. Uh, I, I think it's a little stronger than the other two because of the shapes and the lines in this image. And then um, I, I, I like that you focused on, actually you have most of the foreground in focus, at least some of the mosses on the left side of the tree are definitely got some detail in them. And then you go back to that. Uh, so that's the foreground. And then you go back to the middle ground, the rocks and that second tree on the left, which has a nice swooping diagonal, semi-diagonal into the frame. I like that. Two different trees maybe that we're looking at. So you're, you're identifying two different species here. And uh, then you've got the river behind behind that up in the left-hand corner. But the thing that happens with that, um, with that is that river is white, reflecting uh, a white sky or a light co colored overcast day. And um, white will always, again, bring your image, your eye out of the image or out to that white. The first person, the first thing a person wants to see or their eye goes to is white in an image. So that by maybe by eliminating that whole uh, river scene on the very left, top left corner, might strengthen the image somewhat. If you were to go in there and crop that, if I'm looking at the crop, um, I kind of like that a little bit better. And then toning down those rocks in between the two trunks would be a um, would be a plus for you to keep the viewer's attention on the tree, which I believe is your main subject. I don't know that for sure. It may be the whole scene, but if I were you, I might make that my subject in this image. Jenny? Yeah, and I was noticing this this rock here is a bit hot. Um, you know, mm -hmm. the, a little overexposed there. Uh, you might be able to tone that down. Um, for me, I mean, we've got the, still, I think the focus is, it looks like there's a little camera shake again. Um, mm -hmm. So again, a tripod might help you. Um, this closer tree, I believe is a ponderosa and this one looks like it's a sequoia. It did say this was shot in Yosemite. 
Um, what interested me was the different textures you have in the bark. Yeah. And I think the story was more that. Um, and so I would suggest maybe, well, one, you need to tell us what it's about a little bit stronger because Sandy was, like she just said, not exactly sure if it was about the trees or about the whole scene. And so you want your viewer to know in an instant what the image is about. And I, for me, if it was about the trees and the difference on how much they look, um, how the bark varies, you could probably get rid of the rocks and the water and maybe change your angle so that you could compress the distance between the trees using a longer lens and just bring them together and just highlight that difference of the, the ponderosa texture versus the sequoia texture. Um, the other thing is maybe this is a series and you could start looking at different tree barks and just make each one its own um, image and do a series that tells a story over a number of images um, instead of trying to do it all in one image. Um, That's an excellent idea. I, I really like that. I still think if you don't mind, Jenny, if I just uh -huh. pop in here, um, yeah. I think a crop somewhere on well, my line is not very straight is down here uh, let me bring that a little further and maybe even to here uh well that's not a straight line either but <laughs> you kind of get what i mean uh yeah eliminate all of this though on the left hand side you don't want that but i do like uh, even if you could have stepped to the left maybe six inches you would have gotten this whole tree trunk in if you cropped it uh, like I just showed you. But I do like Jenny's idea. That's a great idea to, um, you know, to, to make a start a storyline of tree bark. I love that. Yeah, and the, the, you know, everything going on here is a little distracting. And that could be toned down in post if you couldn't position yourself to get rid of it. <clears throat> you could darken that a little bit. Right. We haven't mentioned vignetting yet, and I think we should. Um, you know, uh, these kinds of images really do well with a nice vignette around them. So, uh, you know, that vignette can, uh, you know, draw the, the um, viewer's attention into what is the most important part of the scene, of course, because the vignette's going to give dark edges, and then you're going to have a little lighter spot in the middle. So, you know, you can bring that. Um, you know, you, my attention would be on the tree instead of just on the background or the or the uh, white water or whatever. Right, <clears throat> and that's what dodging and burning were mm -hmm. so important in the wet dark room and still important in the digital dark room <clears throat> to help draw the viewer's eye. <clears throat> excuse me, draw the viewer's eye to what you want them to see. Right, right. Yeah, that's a very powerful tool. People don't use it enough, I think. And then people overuse it. So I have to back off. Of that. <laughs> There's that. Yeah. All right, Kim, thanks so much for sharing your three images today. We hope you um, learned a little bit. Or if you have more questions, feel free to reach out to us at chickstalkingpics at gmail.com. Uh, I am going to forward to the next slide. Uh, that's where you can get a hold of us. Make sure if you're turning in images that your image is no larger than 1920 pixels on the longest side, whether that be vertical or horizontal. Uh, send it to us in JPEG format. If you'd like, go ahead and send us your, um, your settings on your camera, aperture, your ISO, and your, your shutter speed. Uh, we're considering including that in the next set of images that we uh, critique. And, um, you know, just send those over um, to us and we'll uh, have them up in the next session if we can. Uh, only submit photos that you've taken. Don't use anybody else's work. And if you don't want your image critiqued, don't send it in. <laughs> so remember, judging is subjective. You know, Jenny and I have a, a have, we, we have a discussion, we play with an image. 
before we, you know, send it on its way or, or accept it into a competition. So, um, you know, we've had years of experience. So don't, you know, it, we may not be the right judges for you. We may not give you the right critique that you want to hear, but I encourage you to go elsewhere and get other critiques from, and from other uh, pros in the field. So that's always helpful. <clears throat> you learn so much from these critiques. And um, I, I just think everything, you know, all your images are on the, on the way to being star images, Kim. Thanks very much. Jenny? And so um, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notify button, the little bell on uh, YouTube so that you'll know when we post another one of these uh, critiques. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for joining us today, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.